this was a long ride into the Museum of Mississippi History here in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm Chris White with the American Battlefield Trust. I got Chris Mikowski behind the camera, and we're so thankful to our friends out here in Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi, the state capital, about an hour from Vicksburg. Most of you know Vicksburg, and Jackson plays into that Vicksburg campaign. It's very important to our story, and what we're going to do is check out the Civil War section of this museum. If you head over here to Jackson, you can go over to the archives. You can also go to the Civil Rights Museum. There's a lot to see here in Jackson. And in fact, we're just a few blocks from Fortification Boulevard, which is where the old fortifications were here during the Siege of Jackson or the Battle of Jackson that took place in May of 1863. Eventually, the state capital is burned uh, by Union forces during that uh, Vicksburg campaign. But we're back here into that rebuilt city, and we're going to check out some of the cool artifacts that they have here. And of course, you have to travel in style, and this is the way we arrive here, obviously via the stagecoach. But if you're going to come out here, there's a lot to learn and see here. There's not just Civil War history. You can learn about the entire state's history. In fact, we're skipping over a large section of this museum to bring this to you live. Um, so what I want to do is just point out some of the cool artifacts. We'll have some of the staff here. One of my old friends, Shane Kyle, will join us here in a little bit. And we'll talk about the history of Mississippi. But we're going to focus, obviously, because we are the American Battlefield Trust, on some of the cool artifacts that they have here that are tied to our larger story of the American Civil War. Obviously, down here in Mississippi, we're in the state capital. This was a city uh, in 1863. It's a city today, and you would have many of the civilians living in this area. And this is actually some stolen jewels. This was a necklace that was stolen from a home here by a member of the 17th Iowa, and this was returned recently to Mississippi and is now here on display in the archives. It's a beautiful um, piece that reminds us that civilians were also touched by the hard hand of war. And as we go out towards Vicksburg on this video swing, you're going to hear a lot about the civilian population that endured that 47-day siege. But out here in Jackson, they also endured uh, some hardships. This here is actually a candy jar. Um, it's uh, Inside of it is actually the flag of the 6th Mississippi Infantry, um, which is a really interesting story coming from the Battle of Shiloh. They lost seven color bearers out there at Shiloh, and this is um, their flag, and you can see it says on it, victory or death. Um, so a really interesting way to display this flag. And we're going to see a lot of flags here. They have a fantastic flag collection. They've already taken us into the bowels of the museum. And we're going to show off some of those cool items for you. You'll notice that they're trying to tell the whole story from the cotton trade and slavery all the way up through this being a state capital. We can see Simon Bolivar Buckner there, Jr., or senior there, um, see a wounded soldier, and then we'll move our way here into the museum, which is going to tell the story of probably the most famous Mississippian, even though he's technically from Kentucky is where he's born, but that is the president of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis. And as Chris Mikowski joked about uh, as we were walking through, we're starting with the end of Davis's story here, kind of, uh, because these are two dueling pistols. These large dueling pistols um, were found on Jefferson Davis when he was actually captured in 1865. Whenever he was fleeing the Confederate capital at Richmond, Virginia, he has these dueling pistols on him. One of the things that we were talking about before we went live today here to, to, to video was you're leaving Richmond, you have all these things to choose from, you choose two single shot dueling pistols to take along with you, they're heavy, uh, they're not exactly what you would think you'd take along, yeah, probably for some personal defense, but probably not the first thing you would think to, to grab as you're heading out the door. And there's some other really interesting artifacts here. Here's actually a, 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 a horn here made from a cow, uh, from, from the cows. Chris, I'm trying to think. Horn. Horn, <laughs> yeah, horn. Um, that, that actually would uh, signal for the slaves to uh, work on the plantation. Some uh, plantations will use bells, others use horns like that. It's a really interesting artifact. And then as we keep moving our way through here, we're going to see some more tied to Jefferson Davis. Now, Davis had a plantation about an hour and a half drive from where we are, down on uh, Davis Point. It's on our Davis Bend on the Mississippi River. Um, his house is no longer there. The Mississippi shifted so many times, and I believe the house may have burned, but don't quote me on that. I'm doing this off the cuff. But this is actually um, his commission, um, Jefferson Davis, uh, for being the major general of the Army of Mississippi in May of 1861. So this is a really interesting 
uh, artifact that they have here. Obviously, he's the president of the, the Confederacy, uh, but he was also in charge of Mississippi troops for a time. Uh, so whenever they come together. Over here, we also have um, an election uh, sheet here talking about the election that took place on Wednesday, November 6th, 1861. And for president, you notice there, that's Jefferson Davis of Mississippi. And right below him is Alexander H. Stevens of Georgia. So that will be for the Confederate presidency, not what you would think of with Stephen A. Douglas and others who are running against um, Abraham Lincoln. So there are an, a number of elections taking place. So that's a really interesting election night, November 6th, 1861 for President Jefferson Davis. So we have those ties to Davis, who is um, not born in Mississippi, but he is probably the most famous Mississippian from the Civil War. He's born in Kentucky, but makes his home here in Mississippi, leads some Mississippi troops into the Mexican-American War. He's a very effective Secretary of War for the U.S., and then eventually is a senator, and then goes on to become the president of the Confederacy. One of the more famous uh, items that you would hear about during the campaigning with William T. Sherman is something that you see here, and this is what we call a Sherman necktie. A Sherman necktie is a superheated piece of rail that is gonna be uh, usually uh, gonna be on top of a large bonfire, most likely made out of railroad ties. Uh, creosote in those would actually burn very hot. And then you would take those railroad ties or the railroad rails, put those on top of the bonfires and then take them around a tree and tie them in a knot. And so this became known as a Sherman necktie. Uh, became more famous, usually tied to the Atlanta campaign or the March to the Sea. But this is one that was recovered uh, very close to here whenever Jackson was burned in 1863. So this is a really cool artifact that was pulled uh, right out of the river just not too far from us. Am I correct, Shane? Yeah, the Pearl River. So. The Pearl River. Take a walk right over here. Real fast, just want to point out a couple other things. We have some really interesting homespun uniforms around this, this museum that are on display. Um, this one is from a, a Confederate who was wounded at the Battle of the Wilderness, uh, which took place in May of 1864. Uh, there are uh, at least eight Mississippi regiments that serve at the Battle of the Wilderness. Uh, they all fight actually in the, the sector along Route 621, the Orange Plank Road. And this is a really cool uh, homespun shirt that you see here. Um, and you can also see there's a hole over here in the right arm. Um, you can see here had two pockets and then the beautiful, looks like bone buttons that are uh, holding that together. And then we also have down here a Bible uh, for Union forces that was captured by Union forces. Um, and this is from Alexander Lomax, who was with the 12th Mississippi Infantry. And he was uh, in a Union or in a hospital in Frederick, Maryland, a Union hospital. Um, and you can actually see what it looks like where the bullet actually hit, where the mini ball actually hit that, that Bible. So if you get a chance to come out here to Jackson, be sure and check this museum out. And you're not going to want to miss, if you are a Gettysburg fan like our boss Gary Edelman is, you're not going to want to miss this section of the museum. Uh, over here we have, before we get to that Gettysburg portion, we have our Colt repeating uh, rifle. This is a, a rifle that uh, looks like a pistol, does it not? Well, Colt also manufactured a long rifle. Initially, these were issued to the United States sharpshooters. Um, they were not the best rifles to use for sharpshooters. In fact, they're not a great rifle at all, but they are rare and they're really um, interesting to see because it has that cylinder like you would see on a standard issue Colt Navy or Colt Army pattern, just in a rifle form. And then of course, beside it, we have a Spencer repeating rifle, the 52 caliber, um, which is both of these rifles are in fantastic shape. You're at the American Battlefield Trust. Please share this with your friends, with your families. Click that subscribe button and be sure to check out this museum. Uh, go over to their website, over to their Facebook, ch uh, Facebook channel, as well as their YouTube channel. We'll put those down below in the description so you can go over and like their pages and follow along as well. They have some great, um, uh, they have some great lectures that are available online. And now we're checking out some of this uh, cool artifacts that they have here now specifically tied to our Battle of Gettysburg. And this sword that you see here, this uh, sword and scabbard, this was worn by uh, William Barksdale. He's a Tennessee native, but he is going to become a Mississippi lawyer. Uh, Barksdale commands four Mississippi regiments uh, at places like 
uh, Chancellorsville at the Second Battle of Fredericksburg. He's going to serve at Fredericksburg itself during the first battle where his men will defend the city uh, during a river crossing. And he is mortally wounded on July 2nd, 1863 at, the Get at Gettysburg. Um, he's leading a charge that breaks up the peach orchard and his men are actually attacking the peach orchard salient from two different directions. His 21st Mississippi commanded by Ben Humphreys, 53 years young, will swing around one side of the peach orchard while his other three regiments smash it from another side. As they start pushing forward, Barksdale in the most glorious charge ever seen according to one man, will keep pushing forward. When he eventually starts to approach Cemetery Ridge, he's on horseback, he's wearing these three stars, which even though he's a Brigadier General, uh, he's wearing Colonel stars going forward, and Barksdale is felled from his horse. Uh, Barksdale, uh, after he's felled from his horse, will be taken over to the Jacob Hummelbaugh farm, which is along the Tawny Town Road. There he is going to be administered by a man named Robert Cassidy. He's a musician from the 148th Pennsylvania. Uh, Barksdale, who has been shot and, and mortally wounded, is laying in the farmyard of the Hummelbaugh's. Uh, whenever some of his, looks like his, his sword's gonna be recovered, his uh, collar's recovered, and there's a, um, uh, in the 33rd New York's regimental history, a quote that is going to say that the, on the crimson fields of Gettysburg is where the haughty and supercilious William Barksdale breathed out his last, last breath of life without even a slave to bring him a cold cup of water. That was written in 1864, and they're kind of throwing some Civil War era shade back at Barksdale, that, that uh, slave owner and plantation owner here in Mississippi. But ironically, when they wrote that, they didn't realize the man tending to him was named Robert Cassidy from the 148th Pennsylvania, who was giving him whiskey and water and tending to him. So no, there's not a slave bringing him a cold cup of water, but there is a Union soldier who's helping to tend to Barksdale. He's buried on the Gettysburg battlefield initially under a large cherry tree, and his body is later exhumed, because Cassidy will actually write back to Barksdale's widow. Barksdale will be exhumed and then uh, brought down here to Mississippi where he is buried in his final resting place. Now, this isn't the only tie we have to Gettysburg. Um, many of you who are, are familiar with the first day's battle up along the railroad cut, we have uh, Joseph Davis, Jefferson Davis's nephew, so nepotism's alive and well in the Confederate Army. He is leading a brigade of Mississippians. Three of his four regiments are on the battlefield at Gettysburg on the first day of July. And one of the most famous stories to take place there at Gettysburg will be between the second Mississippi Infantry fighting in the railroad cut north of the Chambersburg Pike and Rufus Dawes's six Wisconsin Infantry. So to tell a little bit more about that story, I'm gonna bring my friend Shane Kyle on here. Shane is the deputy director over here at the museum. Come on, Shane, feel free to join us. And Shane, I've known Shane for now 17 or 18 years, 18 which is years, hard to believe. So. <laughs> and uh, Shane has been gracious enough to invite us out here to the museum. He's gonna take us behind the scenes in just a little bit of, a little bit of time, but he's also gonna tell us about the flags behind us, both to the second Mississippi. Yeah. So the, the two flags behind us are really two uh, wonderful examples of Confederate uh, Army Northern Virginia pattern battle flags that we have here in the collection uh, in the Museum Division here at the, Muse or the Mississippi Department of Archives and History. And we have about 65 uh, flags total in the collection, so a very, very large collection of flags here. But behind me, uh, directly behind me, uh, this is the flag that would have been carried by the 2nd Mississippi on July 1st uh, as they come into the railroad cut. You can see uh, the battle honors here for their engagements uh, prior uh, to 1863, so Seven Pines, Manassas, uh, Malvern Hill, Gaines Farm, uh, all their battles in and around Richmond as part of the Peninsula Campaign. And the six, uh, or the second Mississippi is of course gauged in heavy, heavy fighting uh, on July 1st in the railroad cut. And at the end of the day, uh, this flag is, is handed over uh, to the six Wisconsin uh, and the unit uh, uh, surrenders that day and uh, essentially is, uh, by the second, is combat ineffective. Only a handful of men remain who had been assigned to other duties that day. Uh, but on the morning of July 2nd, uh, the men who were remaining uh, as part of the 2nd Mississippi are reissued a new flag uh, from Quartermaster Stock. So Lee's Army had obviously Quartermaster Corps uh, and, and supplies with them. So a new flag is then uh, uh, essentially passed out uh, to the remaining, remaining men of the 2nd Mississippi. And this is a flag that the unit will carry with them then for the remainder of the war and surrender in 1865. So uh, really, really uh, great to be able to have two flags from the same unit. And then with this incredible story of the flags uh, changing hands there at Gettysburg, especially with the heavy fighting in the cuts. So. 
Yeah, I think a lot of folks who are Iron Brigade fans know the story of Frank Waller, who's mm -hmm. up there, uh, earns the Medal of Honor. Uh, Sergeant Murphy, William Murphy, who's up there helping to take this flag. So if you're an Iron Brigade fan, this is a reason to come down here to the to the museum and check it out. And, and Shane, while I have you, what else can we check out here at the museum? If we're a visitor, what, what all do you have to offer? Um, and, uh, you know, what programs do you have coming up? Sure. So we so we have an incredible collection here uh, at the museum, and obviously today we're focused pretty heavily on our Civil War collection. Uh, but when you come here to the Museum of Mississippi History, you're going to get uh, 13,000 years of history here in the state of Mississippi, going back to our earliest settlers uh, and the native cultures that were here uh, early on. Uh, we have items, obviously, all the way from from that time uh, up through present day. Uh, you'll get political history, you'll get Civil War history, military history, uh, industrial history. Um, really, the purpose of this museum is to to, to show to showcase and tell uh, all the great stories here uh, that make up the state of Mississippi and its people. So uh, a lot of great programming goes on here on a weekly and monthly basis. Uh, if you like battle flags like the two behind me, uh, in the spring of 2024, we will have a flag exhibit here at the Museum of Mississippi History. Uh, it'll be a temporary exhibit up for the summer. It does not have a name yet, but I can get uh, and share that uh, information with Chris to share to all of you here as soon as we have it. So. Awesome. And so we encourage you, make sure you get, your, get yourself out here. If you come to Vicksburg, I mean, Jackson legit is a 45, 50 minute ride straight across the state right out here. Or if you fly into Jackson, make sure that you come. It's a 15 minute drive from the airport. You can be right here in no time. And as Shane pointed out, there's a massive display of flags. Now, you know, people talk about the Confederate flags and most people associate the Confederate flag with the with these um, types of the, the battle flags that we see here. But there are like 22 different Confederate flags that fly at Vicksburg alone. I mean, you might not know it's a Confederate flag just to look at it in different ways. I mean, we have our first national flags that look very much like the first American flag, the Betsy Ross flag, if you will. Um, we have others that, that show up over here that would have been uh, carried here with the 10th Mississippi Infantry. Um, a little bit different. Every one of them have a story to tell. Many of them are on silk. They're made out of silk. They're hand painted. Sometimes they're made by very uh, well-known companies like Tiffany and Company in New York made Civil War battle flags as well as swords. And many of them were also made from homespun materials from ladies who were trying to send their men off to war and have the memento of home. Um, and they're not just making flags. They're also making uniforms. They're also making shirts, socks. In fact, Robert E. Lee's wife is going to make at least 26 pairs of socks during the winter of 1863-64 for soldiers. And Robert E. Lee actually chastises his wife. Or, you said you sent, we're supposed to send us 26. You only sent us like 23 pairs. So she sent on the, the pairs that she owed him, owed him. So there's a lot of homespun in here. And I think this, this uh, uniform that we see here to Otis Baker um, is a really great example. This is a Confederate second lieutenant's frock coat. Um, you can see the slouch hat up on the top, and then you can take a look at this uniform coat itself. Um, it, there'll be nine buttons, there's supposed to be nine buttons on this when it's made. It's, a, uh, it's an officer's frock. We know this for a few reasons. First off, up at the collar, we have blue around the collar, so that means he's an infantryman. And then below it, we have one um, bar, which is going to show that he is a second lieutenant, the lowest ranking line officer that's out there. But you'll notice the buttons are actually federal buttons, union buttons. They have the federal eagle on them. Uh, so th that's making do with what they can. Uh, you also notice that, that the, the uh, jean wool that they're using here is very much a homespun look to it. Um, this is most likely a lined coat. I don't have it off here to, to tell you about that. On the uh, arms and specifically down by the cuffs, you can see uh, the blue on the cuffs to show that it's infantry. You also have three buttons up each cuff and then braiding known as Austrian braiding that helps to also tell us that he is a second lieutenant. Um, but it's a really interesting uh, frock coat that you would have here. The pants have the line down them or the stripe down the, the side to show that's a very thin stripe showing he's an officer. Again, a very uh, light butternut, if you will. And then we have a union <laughs> belt buckle here or a federal eagle within the belt buckle for his officer's sword and hanger, which is in pretty good condition. Uh, but it looks very much homespun. It almost looks like it, this was once, a, um, uh, once an NCO's belt or non-commissioned officer's belt. 
And then up over here, we have that shirt, um, which if you look at the coat versus the shirt, the shirt is big. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's out on display, but that's a good size shirt. And it's a little bit more ornate than you would think, think there with the ruffle uh, on the chest and everything. So that's um, a really cool, that's a really cool artifact that you have there. And then down over here, we're gonna finish off. Um, they bring you right up into the modern military. Uh, we have for the USS Mississippi, there's silver over okay. here. Over I here, we're gonna take you into the World it. Wars. Um, behind Chris Mikowski doing the same thing, into the Cold War, up into Desert Storm and Desert Shield. So this is just one portion of this museum. And if we take a step out here onto the balcony, you can see that this is just one of Mississippi's many stories. And this is a fantastic place to uh, cut away from this video. We're actually gonna go into the bowels of the museum. So we're gonna uh, head down into the curatorial collection, basically what we would consider their attic or their basement. And they're gonna pull out some different artifacts for us, um, including some battle flags that were used at some of the most famous battlefields uh, that you may have heard of, from the Eastern Theater over in Gettysburg to Vicksburg to Chickamauga and beyond. We really want to thank our friends here at the Museum of Mississippi History. This has just been an awesome day. Uh, we've gone through, we've made a few videos for you, so please check those out. We've covered Confederate Civil War flags. We've checked out their Civil War collection, and we've gone behind the scenes to check out just some random, really cool artifacts that they have housed here. Um, this is a really interesting museum complex that you can come and visit. Behind me, you might see the old Mississippi State Capitol. You can go and visit that. You've seen an artifact from there, actually the drapes that were made into a shirt. We have the archives building behind me. And then over here, of course, we have the Museum of Mississippi History and their civil rights, uh, Mississippi Civil Rights Museum. Our state-of-the-art complexes, they are beautiful. They're here in Jackson. You can check out their website below and you can also check out their online collection. As Megan said earlier in one of our videos, they are digitizing their collection so that you can enjoy them online. So if you ever get a chance to come out here to Vicksburg, drive out to Jackson where we're standing, come out to the state capital of Mississippi and check out this museum complex. Do some research if you're a Civil War historian, check out the old state capital and really immerse yourself in Mississippi history. It's more than just the Civil War. We encourage you to check out that history, but the museum behind me, it tells the whole story of this very interesting and beautiful state. On behalf of the American Battlefield Trust, Chris uh, Mikowski is behind the camera. I'm Chris White. I want to thank you for watching. I want to ask you to click that subscribe button, click that bell notification, share this with your friends, and thank you for supporting Battlefield education and preservation.